This is the first section of Unit 2, all about logic and reasoning. So Section 2.1, we'll start with our conditional statements. Our essential question, when is a conditional statement true or false? So our objectives, mathematicians will be able to write conditional statements. Mathematicians will be able to use definitions written as conditional statements and mathematicians will be able to write biconditional statements. Alright, in section 2.1 we definitely need to establish some key vocabulary that's going to be used throughout the unit. Starting with conditional statement, which is a logical statement that has two parts. The hypothesis, which we represent with a P, and the conclusion, which we represent with Q. And it's written, if, hypothesis, then, conclusion. And symbolically, we say P implies, remember the arrow that points in some direction, implies Q. Our hypothesis is the if part of the conditional statement, written symbolically as P. The conclusion is the then part of the conditional statement, written symbolically as Q. All right, let's practice our understanding of conditional statements by grabbing two different colors to identify the hypothesis and conclusions. So it could be a highlighter or colored pen, your choice. Then rewrite the following as conditional statements. So let's take a look at the first one. All whales are mammals. Notice there's no if or then in this statement. So our hypothesis in this case is all whales. And our conclusion is that they are mammals. So if we rewrite, we say, if an animal is a whale, then it is a mammal. All right, next, two angles are supplementary if they are a linear pair. So this time, our hypothesis is here at the end of the statement, because it's after we see the word if. And then the conclusion's actually in the front. So if we rewrite this as if then, we can say if two angles are a linear pair, then they are supplementary. All right, next, all 90 degree angles are right angles. So what we're saying here is if an angle is 90 degrees, then, whoops, then it has a right, they are right angles. So if an angle's measure is 90 degrees, then it is a right angle. So pause the video here and see if you can do numbers 4, 5, and 6 on your own. Alright, check your answers. On number 4, our hypothesis is that because x equals negative 3, so that's what we would start with, then 2x plus 7 equals 1. So if x equals negative 3, then 2x plus 7 equals 1. For number 5, we can say if n equals 9, then n squared equals 81. And on number six, if it is Wednesday, then we wear pink. All right, our next vocabulary word is negation. And it means the opposite of the original statement. And symbolically, we say not, which is symbolically this little wavy segment bar. For example, we would say not P is the little wavy bar P. So let's take the following statements and negate them. The first statement is, the ball is red. So how can we say the opposite of, the ball is red? Well, we say that the ball is not red. Let's take a look at this next statement, the cat is not black. Well, how do I say the opposite of, the cat is not black? I can say that the cat is black. So negate simply means to say the opposite of the original, and then we have the symbol that's like a wavy segment barn. All right, let's take a look at some other related conditionals to the original. First, we'll start with the converse. And the converse is switching the hypothesis and conclusion of the original. It symbolically also switches, so we switch the Q and the P, so Q implies P. Next, we have the inverse. The inverse is when the hypothesis and conclusion are the negative of the original. In other words, negate the original. So we'd say not P implies not Q. 
So not hypothesis implies not Q, uh, conclusion. And then our final related statement is the contrapositive. And the contrapositive is when you first write the converse. Remember the converse is switch, hypothesis, conclusion. So when you first um, write the converse, then negate it. So symbolically we say not Q implies not P. All right, so let's take a look at practicing these uh, related conditionals. Is the following true or false? If false, provide a counterexample. So let's look at this original conditional statement. If measure of angle A equals 99 degrees, then angle A is obtuse. So if part is the hypothesis and the then part is the conclusion. So is this a true statement? It is, because obtuse means greater than 90 degrees. So this is a true statement. If the measure of angle A is 99, then it's an obtuse angle. So now let's take a look at the converse. Remember, the converse means to switch the hypothesis and conclusion. So we say if angle A is obtuse, then measure of angle A is 99 degrees. Well, that's not true because we could have angles that are different than 99 and it's still obtuse. For example, you could have uh, 110 degrees. That's obtuse. You could have 130 degrees. That's obtuse. So just because we say if the hypothesis being angle A is obtuse, then it must be 99 degrees. Well, that's false. And here are some examples. All right, next let's take a look at the inverse. Now the inverse is when you um, just simply negate the hypothesis and conclusion. So we'd say, and negate means opposite. So we're saying if measure of angle A is not equal to 99 degrees, we'll negate. And then angle A is not obtuse, negates the conclusion. Now is this a true statement? or false statement. And indeed, this is a false statement because, you know, you could have angles that are still obtuse and the hypothesis would be that the measure of angle A is not equal to 99 degrees. So any of these example, 100 degrees, 120 degrees, are counterexamples to the original statement. All right, and then our final conditional that we want to consider is a contrapositive. And a contrapositive um, is the converse negated. So that means we're switching hypothesis conclusion and we negate. So if angle A is not obtuse, then measure of angle A is not equal to 90 degrees. Is this true or false? And it is true. If it's not an obtuse, then it is not equal to 99 degrees because measure of angle A is acute, so it cannot be 99 degrees. All right, let's practice the if-then form, the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive of the conditional statement Guitar players are musicians. Decide whether each statement is true or false. All right, let's start with the conditional. Always start with the original. Let's rewrite it in the if-then form. So we can say, if you are a guitar player, then you are a musician. So just to be clear, the hypothesis is the guitar player part, and then the conclusion is that you are a musician. So is this true or false? We say it's true, because it's the definition of a musician. Next, let's consider the converse. Remember, the converse is to switch the hypothesis and conclusion. So if you are a musician, then you are a guitar player. So the hypothesis was that you are a guitar player. The conclusion for the original was you are a musician. So when we switch, we say, if you are a musician, sorry, 
if you are a musician, then you are a guitar player. So is this true or false? And we can say, that's false. Because not all musicians play guitar. You can play almost any instrument and be a musician. You can also just be a singer. And you're also a musician. All right, next let's take a look at the inverse. All right, so the inverse would be if you are not a guitar player, so negate the hypothesis of the original, then you are not a musician. Negate the original conclusion. Is this true or false? And we say false because non-guitarists can be musicians. All right, and then the final statement we, we want to consider is the contrapositive. And the contrapositive is the converse negated. So we have, if you are not a musician, then you are not a guitar player. Is this true or false? And we say this is true just by definition of a musician. All right, and the last vocabulary that we want to establish for this first section is a biconditional statement. Remember, by means to, and conditional is just a logical statement with a hypothesis conclusion. So if we put this together, it's when a conditional statement and its converse are both true. So the conditional and the converse are both true, true then they can be written as a single biconditional statement containing the exact words of if and only if. Or if you abbreviate, it would be IFF. Symbolically, we have the double arrow. So let's practice our bicondition writing a biconditional statement with our definition of perpendicular. So perpendicular <clears throat> we'll start with the conditional statement. If two lines form right angles, then they are perpendicular. Is this true? Yes. It is true. Now, since it is true, also let's consider the converse and see if it is true. The converse is to switch the hypothesis and conclusion. So we would say, if two lines are perpendicular, then they form a right angle. And this is true as well. So if we put this together, we have a biconditional. We can say, two lines are perpendicular if and only if they intersect to form a right angle. So we kind of combine the two parts and the two parts that we combine are the conclusion of one statement with the hypothesis of the other. And we take away the if, then, and replace it with these four words right here in the middle. If and only if. All right, this is the start of our logic and reasoning unit. So bring in any clarifying questions. We'll practice conditional statements and all the related statements as well. See you in class.